So today we're going to talk about the RTX 3080, but not the 10 gigabyte VRAM version we're used to seeing. We're going to talk about a potential 20 gigabyte version. Is it something that you should wait for to get until it comes out? Do you even have a choice considering the 3080 is pretty much instantly sold out? Let's talk about a few important points and that way you can make a better buying decision. Let's get started. Hey guys, Tiago with Classical Technology. Thank you for joining me for another video. Remember to smash that like button, subscribe, gets me very happy. Leave a comment below. Is the 20 gigabyte VRAM version something you're even considering? Recently, we did get some potential leak information that NVIDIA's partners will be releasing a 20 gigabyte VRAM version of the RTX 3080. And then the question must be asked, should you just completely skip the current 3080 and just wait for that to come out? Let's discuss a few very important points in relation to this. And that way you should be able to get a better idea of what's going on. First of all, let's tackle the issue if 10 gigabyte of VRAM is enough for you know the highest end gaming that you're gonna do. According to Nvidia and one of the questions that they answered, they said that they did do a substantial amount of research and they even talked to game developers and they determined that 10 gigabytes of VRAM would be more than sufficient to max out pretty much every game that's out there now. And they said, of course, you're gonna have to find some type of balance on the amount of VRAM that the GPU will have and its price. Cause as you know, this is a pretty expensive thing to bump up. That's why the 24 gigabyte version, the 3090, is considerably more expensive. So we would also assume, and we're going to talk about this a little later, that the 3080 with the 20 GB is also going to be more expensive. But as to the first question here, it seems like it doesn't really have that big of a performance effect. Um, maybe it's similar to something like PCIe Generation 3 versus 4. In the beginning, everybody thought, all right, PCIe Generation 4 is just what you need to get for these RTX GPUs. But it ended up being that it's really not that big of a difference between generation three and four. Um, there are other things that matter a lot more like the clock speed of your CPU and things of that nature. So this could be another potential factor where in a lot of games, you're not necessarily gonna max out all that VRAM. A few important things to note is that in general, even if a game, let's say a game with like a really big map or something like that, like Call of Duty 4, allocates a really large amount of VRAM, it doesn't mean that it's really gonna be using all of that. Even like Flight Simulator 2020, which is an extremely demanding game. Basically, the most important thing here is gonna be the memory bandwidth. And that's something that's definitely improved in the 3080, even the 10 gigabyte version. The memory bandwidth is definitely significantly better than the previous generation and that's going to be one of the best deciding factors in terms of the performance. So right now, in terms of the actual performance being a factor, I don't think the 3080 is a big deal right now. Let's say if you got your hands on one, I really wouldn't worry about it now. If you're talking about really long-term future-proofing, like you want to play 4K games and always take advantage of all the newest games coming out, in the future, it's possible that it's going to be an issue, and that's probably one reason why we're getting this 20 gigabyte version. As games become more and more demanding, it would make sense that they're going to use more and more of that VRAM allocation. Right now, it's not a problem, but potentially really thinking ahead future-proof, it may be an issue. And the second thing to consider here, um, and this may be a little bit of a very loaded question if you should even think about the 20 gigabyte version, just because we don't even have our hands yet on the 10 gigabyte version. So in a way, it could be a little bit of like a blessing in disguise. Let's say if this version was just something they wanted to get out there quickly, ends up being somehow more dominant in the market. I mean, that would definitely be the better GPU. And of course, it's gonna be more expensive. So considering the difficulty of actually even getting an RTX 3080, this isn't really even a question you have to ponder right now. It may make you feel a little bit better that you couldn't get this RTX 3080 that just came out. You may think, okay, I'll just wait for the 20 gigabyte version. Maybe by then there'll be better stock or I'll actually have a chance at buying one. So that may make you feel a little bit better, but right now you really don't have much of a choice. So this is definitely very theoretical. Obviously, let's say if both were out on the market, depending on the price premium, it would definitely make sense to future-proof yourself more with the card that's going to have more GBs. And then we come to a third point and that's going to be price. Now we know that adding more VRAM is not necessarily going to be cheap. That's why the 3090 is literally $1,500. 
That has, of course, considerably more VRAM. Now, it's hard to say exactly at what premium a 20 gigabyte version will be priced over the 699 Founders Edition, but considering the fact that this 20 gigabyte version likely won't be released in the Founders Edition, it's likely going to be a third party card. A lot of these third party cards are already around $750 to $800. I would say that this version with more VRAM more than likely would come in around maybe $200 more than the Founders Edition, so maybe closer to like $900. And this starts to get a lot closer to the price of last generation's 2080 ti and it kind of diminishes a little bit that really sweet price to performance ratio that the 3080 has at 699 because remember what we said before right now sort of the 10 gigabyte vram is not really a very serious limitation um, even if games allocate almost that much you're not really utilizing all of that vram so it's kind of a moot point right now in the future of course as games come out um, i have no doubt that they're going to utilize more and more vram but right now it's really not a major deal so you're going to have to see if you're going to want something like that at a significant price premium to what the 699 card is of course that doesn't bring you that much closer to the price of a 3090 3090 is still going to be substantially more but now you're probably going to have a choice sort of in that mid-range until something like a 3080 ti comes out which would definitely have more vram or at least close to this now, apparently there may also be a 3070 Ti with around 16 gigabytes of VRAM. Um, this is very, very interesting as well. And then it starts to come in in a little bit of a funny space with the 3080, you know, the current version now. But it's always been the case with GPU technology, especially with NVIDIA. If you're a very early adopter, you really do have to sort of expect that whatever you bought, even if it's the highest end, may quickly be replaced and outdated very, very quickly by NVIDIA as technology technology moves pretty quickly. This has happened many times in the past. Even the 1080 used to be the top card and the 1080 Ti comes out and it's now the number one performer. And the Titan cards such as the Titan X Pascal and then the Titan XP, they also had this sort of happen where they were the top card. Then all of a sudden there's a little bit better version that comes out. And then the people that were really early adopters end up getting a little bit hosed because they had to spend a lot of money in the beginning for a GPU that now isn't the best anymore. It still performs pretty well and they don't get outdated that quickly, but something comes out that's significantly better. That's something that we can definitely start to see here, maybe with the 3070 Ti with more VRAM, maybe with the 3080 as well with the 20 gigabytes of VRAM. Now, if the price premium is more, it's not as big a deal, at least if you have the 10 gigabyte version, you can think all right you saved a few bucks your games are still running really well it's not really necessary but just keep in mind that your high-end gpu may quickly be outdated by the sort of subsequent launches that nvidia does in order to stay competitive and that's going to be our next main point why are there so many of these versions and versions that are going to come out in the future and i think the biggest reason it's so nvidia can have something to counter answer amd we all know that on october 28th amd rdna2 as we like to affectionately call it, Big Navi, is going to be announced. Um, and apparently one of the main cards is going to be 16 gigabytes of VRAM, which would match up perfectly with the 3070 Ti with 16 gigabytes of VRAM. Then, of course, NVIDIA can't have their basically gaming flagship card, which is the 3080. 3090 is a different story. That's also, of course, the main flagship, but that's a really different beast. The mainstream high-end card really is the 3080, so they can't have AMD sort of beating that card. So that's why I really do think that they're holding back on these 20 gigabyte versions. That way, if Nvidia releases something that's 16, they release something that's 20. It keeps that performance gap even wider. So it's definitely no secret that Nvidia wants to have an ace up its sleeve to counter whatever AMD chooses to release. If it's gonna be a 16 gigabyte VRAM card, like maybe a 6900 XT, Nvidia definitely wants to have something that's gonna be maybe 20 gigabyte. That way they can really stay with that competitive edge. And remember, I'm sure a lot of these companies have products that the other company may be able to guess at, but they may not come completely know about so they definitely have to hold on to a few things at the same time keeping them ready because it does have to go into production into manufacturing so that way they can better answer whatever their competitor does and especially with nvidia sort of keep the stronghold that they have on the market so to summarize is the 20 gigabyte vram version of the rtx 3080 something you should be interested in concerned about 
if you can get right now a 3080 10 gigabyte version we all know that's a pretty high and mighty feat and i would grab one if you can if you can find one and not worry about it but if you do have the patience to wait you have two main factors going on here more availability of the 10 gigabyte version at a little bit better price or the 20 gigabyte version that's going to be definitely more expensive but it's going to give you more headroom in future 4k games down the road like we mentioned right now it's not that big of a factor and the last factor is going to be amd's rdna2 going to be announced october 28th so if you can wait i would definitely wait for that you may not have much of a choice as i think these current 3000 series gpus are going to be perpetually sold out couple coming in stock people instantly buying them i think it's going to be this story likely for a few months and we really have to wait and see if amd's product is going to be able to keep up with nvidia's high-end ampere gpus because as you've seen so far they're pretty incredible in terms of their performance and their price to performance ratio so amd is going to have to bring some great hardware as well as some very optimized software remember amd recently definitely has had a very rough road with their drivers especially their flagship 5700 xt nvidia by comparison has had much much more stable drivers not very stable launch releases like we saw with the 3080 but their drivers generally do seem to be pretty good all right, guys, I hope this answered some more of your questions. If you do have any more, remember to leave it down in the comments below. Remember to subscribe, smash that like button, take a look at this background here. It's kind of like a Street Fighter game. You know, when there's something going on in the background, we got the fan spinning. And remember to subscribe once again, and I'll see you guys on the next video.